Jimmy, what changed in the second half? Um, I mean, defense. You know, again, it was one of those nights where, you know, I thought in the first half, for whatever reason, we were tentative. Um, and we weren't bringing the physicality and taking it to them. I thought we were on our heels. And give them credit, right? They are aggressive. They're strong. They're physical offensively. Um, you know, they can dominate the painted area if you let them. And I thought they did that to start the game. But, um, you know, again, our guys believe in our defense and know when called upon, you know, we can get stops. And, again, it was five guys protecting the paint. Um, you know, we told them at halftime if they beat us taking contested threes, that's on the coaching staff. If they beat us in the paint, that's on everybody. So, um, you know, they took the message to heart. There were so many ancillary factors coming into the game. What do you attribute the slow start to? L.A. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, I mean, it was. It was, you know, the emotions of the game. Again, you know, playing in L.A., the afternoon game. There's so many things that can go into it. But, um, you know, again, it's. 48 minute game and you know having trust that at some point it was clicking um, and I thought it did in the second half. Well, following up a little bit on what Chris was asking in the first half, Darius and Donovan, it looked like the three players kind of got their offense going a little bit, but Jared and Evan weren't even really looking to shoot. How do you kind of put it so all four of those guys, I know they're stopping that, but the game's all open on the floor, but they're all kind of going at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. You know, hopefully, and what we keep preaching is you just make the right play over and over again. And, you know, if you're open, the shot is the right play. If the defense, you know, comes to you, you make the next pass, that's the right play. So, you know, I think sometimes our guys get caught in emotion, and I'll give it, you know, on our – but it's like sometimes they're too selfless, you know, where they're trying to make the right play and they're trying to make the one more pass. Um, but our big guys can dominate the painted area. We've seen them do it. So – um, we just got to make sure, you know, again, that they understand that at points the most selfless thing you can do is take the shot. Um, and I thought, you know, in that first half, you know, their rhythm was a little disrupted. It was choppy because both of them never getting in foul trouble. So they were in and out of the game, and I don't think they felt comfortable either. When you come out of the training camp, the goal is to always get a good start to the season. So in your basketball experience, you get off to a nice start like this from the you know, how do you weigh that with this significance? Uh, I mean, it's, it's important uh, because I think it builds confidence and belief, um, you know, especially some of the wins that we've had and the places that we've gone to to have to go get those wins. Um, you know, already playing three overtime games and being able to figure out, you know, how to win in close games and close moments. Um, but, you know, it's a long season, uh, and the important thing is that we sustain it and we continue to build the right habits. Uh, it, it's that, you know, confidence and belief that you know he can get it done. And, you know, obviously he knows what he's capable of. But having guys, you know, it's almost that you go to the park with your big brother kind of feel, um, you know, where you're going up against older guys, but you know your brother's there and he's got your back. So it gives you that confidence that you can go out and do more, um, you know, that you can play the game and play it to your strengths and play it to your level of confidence. So. Uh, you know, the guys have a lot of trust in him, and, you know, the, the best part about it is, you know, he earned it right away, uh, and he earned it by being a part of the group. As soon as he got to Cleveland, all he wanted to do was be a good teammate and be a part of the group. He never did anything to isolate himself, and as good as he is, it would have been easy to do it, you know what I mean? And people would have, you know, moved around towards him, but all he ever wanted to do was be a part of the group. What examples of being a good teammate stuck out to you? I mean, just the way he talks to people. Um, you know, there's nothing that we ask everyone else to do that he's not willing to do. Um, you know, like getting guys together, you know, going to the playoff game, like the baseball playoff game, like all these things, not just basketball related, but making sure the group is organized and together. Uh, he's gone above and beyond. Uh, I mean, you know, again, being in the East a lot, um, you know, you know what he's capable of as a scorer, and you watch the numbers that he puts up. Um, but he is, you know, he is an elite offensive player and a complete offensive player. Uh, you know, the passes that he can make, 
you know, cross court and on time, on target. Like those are passes that big guys typically make, bigger wings, I should say. Um, you know, his understanding of the game, his IQ, and, you know, again, like his want to help the team. You know, those are things you just don't know when you're not with them every single day. Chris, JB, you've asked a lot of Karras on the defensive end throughout the course of this year. I'm not sure it gets tougher than guarding LeBron. How do you feel like he handled that matchup? I mean, he took it. You know what I mean? Like, again, one of the and in the conversation for greatest players of all time. Like, all you can do is fight and scrap and try to make it difficult. And, you know what I mean? Like, Karras has proven on every matchup that, you know, he's just not going to back down. Uh, and he's going to do his best because he knows what's, what's best for the team. And I think it just falls in line with uh, how selfless this group is. And, you know, just willing to sacrifice. Like, it's hard, you know what I mean, to go out and guard a guy like that. And then Karras, you know, has been, you know, a scorer for you know, the majority of his career. But, like, he's sacrificing that for the greater good of the team because he knows what this team needs. So, uh, again, you know, our group, and we are extremely fortunate, We've never had to sacrifice character over talent, uh, and we just keep building on that. Anything else from Laura? Where does the um, You know, I, I think it's their natural, you know, their natural upbringing, personality, whatever it is, and then when you put it in a group, it just fosters itself to something bigger uh, than the individual. But like when you look at these guys and you know you go down the line, and I don't say it lightly, but like there's not one guy who I don't enjoy going and being able to work with every single day, right? And if you ask the group, they'll tell you the same thing. Um, so as individuals, like they're phenomenal human beings, and then you put them all in the same place, and you know it just becomes bigger than greater than the individual.